Linda Winkler, president of the Murray Parents Association. Murray Center is located in Southern Illinois. In this series, you will meet just a few of the amazing Murray Center families. You will hear about their struggles and triumphs and hopefully gain an understanding of why Murray Center is so critical, not just for these families and their loved ones, but for the entire community. Hi, my name is Peggy Strong and my daughter Marjorie Strong lives at Murray Center in Centralia. She's been there now three and a half years. Three and a half years ago, uh, Marjorie had over 30 diagnoses. She lived in a scylla. Since she was medically fragile uh, over the past four years, she had little or no opportunity to actually move. She was basically living on a couch. She was actually dying on a couch. For those four years, I trained the Scylla staff uh, who had no medical background. I managed all of her prescriptions and therapies. Um, in fact, the uh, fill-in staff had put Marjorie in the hospital twice because they didn't read her care manual and I didn't have a chance to talk to them. They just weren't set up to take care of somebody with complex medical uh, problems. And uh, so there was little to no oversight. And her family doctor said she was in a systemic decline. Everything was failing. I needed to uh, make some decisions about DNRs, feeding tubes, um, I got hospice on standby, and uh, I basically needed to find a safe place for Marjorie to leave this world in peace and out of pain, where she could be safe uh, from any aggressive behaviors because disabled people don't often realize that they're harming somebody. Well, when Marjorie came to Murray Center, she had not had a drink of liquid in three years. We had to take all her liquids and add thicket and make it to a pudding consistency, or she would aspirate it directly into her lungs. She had to have, we had to count on a little timer for her to have 15 to 20 seconds per bite and we had to watch to see that the food went down properly or she would aspirate. Um, she had renal failure. She was in stage four kidney disease, renal failure. She had an ulcer the size of a silver dollar. It was 30 millimeters across. No food was passing from her stomach to her lower intestine. She had impacted bowel. She had a paralyzed ileus, which is part of the lower intestine. Um, she had terrible pulmonary circulation in her legs to the point where her legs turned the color of Welch's purple grape juice. Uh, and that was a lot of from sitting on a couch constantly too. Now that she could get up and move around and walk, some of that went away. Um, every system, her lungs were scarred from all the pneumonia that she had from uh, having food aspirated into her lungs. It was a short period of time. It was probably within a two or three month period of time. We took her over to the hospital and we ran the test, the swallow study, to see what consistency of food or liquid could she get into her stomach without aspirating. And when the speech pathologist said, well, she can swallow liquids, we just watched on the x-ray. And I said, that can't be right. It's been three years that this poor child has not had a drink. And I said, you'll run the test again. And sure enough, they ran the test again and she did fine. So that's how profound the level of care at Murray and the, and the staff individualization for her has made, it made a huge difference right away in the fact that 
all of these many, many uh, complex medical situations which were all colliding with each other. All the medications were conflicting sometimes. It's, it's, a it's a miracle. It's a profound difference that this level of care has made for Marjorie. Um, make no, no mistake, large institutions have a very substantial advantage. Because they are large, people can get up and move around. They're not in a cramped little house, which that little house in the community is very cute and it does work for some. I'm not saying it doesn't work for some. But not everybody can live in a cellar. My daughter was dying in one. And the large size of an institution also allows medical resources as well as other resources to be consolidated and offered to disabled individuals when it's necessary and oftentimes if they're medically fragile at a daily basis. We had over 40 ER visits in three years, many hospitalizations. I hadn't slept in three years. I was, I was desperate. If, if Murray was not a choice, was not an option, Marjorie would not be here. She would have died. And it would have been a slow, painful, horrible death. Well, she rides her bike. Uh, she loves to go to the dances. She loves, she's going on outings constantly. She's been bowling. She's been horseback riding. She's, this is a girl who was on hospice, mind you. She goes to basketball games. Um, she is on the move all the time. She, go, she went to two proms this year and was dressed up to the nines, loving the music, dancing to the music, socializing, um, and this is not her forte. And um, from coming from being on hospice, to having such a vibrant lifestyle and back to life is not some anything I expected. Marjorie went from over 40 visits to the ER in three years to no visits the last three years to the ER. She went from hospice on standby to all her medical diagnosis under control and in remission. She went from dying in pain with over 30 diagnoses living on a couch in a cramped little house to walking around freely in big large hallways out of pain and she's smiling again. She went from her caregivers guessing what to do to medical professionals making those decisions. And so she lives happily in her home at Murray Center today. Um, and it's because of Murray Center that Marjorie is even alive. There's an ongoing constant demand for large facilities like Murray Center. We have constant people coming in and needing the care of Murray Center and we've had constant admissions over the past three years since Marjorie has come there. Um, it's also close enough where I can maintain contact with her the next medical facility of similar choice would have maybe been all the way up to Chicago, six, seven hours away from me. And every other population has a continuum of care. The cognitively disabled people deserve a continuum of care also. See, I have a continuum of care depending on if I have to rehab from surgery or uh, some sort of other disability, if I have a knee replacement, I have a continuum of care as a senior citizen. Why shouldn't the disabled have a continuum of care? There's not just one place.